Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today, we're taking a look at the next batch of Intel Z490 motherboards, priced between $170 and $200 US. In total, I'll be adding eight more boards to the results that we already have, so this will give you a pretty good idea of which boards you should be looking at in this very popular price range. Since we've got so many boards to go over, I'm gonna mostly skip over all the board features and just stick to showing you the vCore portion of the VRM and we'll look at the heat sinks and stuff like that. So I guess we'll start with the more expensive boards and then we'll just work our way down from there. The Gigabyte Z490 Vision G is a $200 Z490 motherboard that's being marketed as a crater board with features such as 2.5 gigabit LAN, high quality integrated audio, and a 12 plus one phase VRM. And here's a look at the vCore portion of the VRM. Gigabyte's using an ISL 69269 PWM controller, which supports 12 phases, and each phase is driven by a Vache SIC 65150 amp power stage. So quite a beefy VRM there, and it should have no trouble handling an overclocked 10900K. Something that I don't really like about the Vision G is all the plastic covering what Gigabyte calls their micro block. Basically, it's a heatsink with an omnidirectional fin design, allowing it to capture airflow from any direction, which is useful for a passively cooled VRM heatsink. However, you somewhat negate any advantages that this design offers when you cover 90% of the heatsink in a plastic shroud. Seems counterintuitive to me, and I really hate seeing form take priority over function. Anyway, moving on, another $200 Z490 motherboard is the MSI Z490 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, and it too supports 2.5 gigabit LAN. It also includes a dozen power stages, though here they're configured to work in pairs, creating a six-phase vCore VRM. Although there is only half as many phases, the current capacity overall has been increased by roughly 20%, so it will be interesting to see how these boards compare. MSI has also included some pretty big heat sinks on the VRM, so at least on the cooling front, the board should do well. The only other $200 Z490 motherboard on sale right now is the ASUS Tough Gaming Z490 Plus, which I have to say doesn't look quite as good as the Gigabyte and MSI models. There are less USB ports on the IO panel and the IO shield isn't pre-installed. The VRM does look decent and here we have the same configuration seen on the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, though the components are different. Of course, ASUS is using the ASP 1900B controller and from it, the vCore portion of the VRM takes six signals, each connecting to a pair of Vichet SIC 639 50 amp power stages. So in terms of current handling, it should be similar to the other $200 Gigabyte and MSI boards. The heat sinks are also quite substantial, so ASUS hasn't tried to cut any costs there. Now dropping down to $190, we have the Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Elite, which when compared to the Vision G is more of a gamer focused motherboard, if, if there is such a thing. The board still packs three M.2 slots and 2.5 gigabit LAN, while the same VRM design has been used featuring the ISL 69269 controller with a 12 phase vCore VRM using Vache SIC 651A 50 amp power stages. The heat sinks aren't huge, but they do have a number of fins cut into them. And more crucially, they aren't covered in plastic. Then we have MSI's Z490 Tomahawk. It's also priced at $190 US, and this is another really nice looking board. And like the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, MSI has again slapped on some rather large VRM heat sinks. And as for the VRM configuration, it remains the same, though we do see a change in the components used. So again, here we have a six phase vCore VRM, but this time MSI is going with a pair of on semiconductor NCP302155 55 amp power stages per phase. So it'll be interesting to see if the on semi or intersil slash renaissance power stages will deliver the best results. Moving on, at $185 US, we find the ASRock Z490 Steel Legend, and early on there seemed to be quite a lot of hype surrounding this board, though I've got to admit, I'm not entirely sure why. At just $5 less than the Tomahawk, it drops two USB 3.2 ports from the IO panel. The gigabit LAN connection has been removed, though it does include 2.5 gigabit LAN, but the Tomahawk has both, and the MSI board also includes larger VRM heat sinks. The VRM is also smaller than what you'll find on the Tomahawk. Here we're looking at an eight phase vCore featuring just eight Vache SIC 632A 50 amp power stages. So that does mean the MSI board offers roughly 65% greater current capacity for the CPU. Then we have the ASRock Z490 Extreme 4 at $170 US, and this board uses the exact same VRM found on the Steel Legend. And as far as I can tell, they're virtually the same motherboard, the only difference being the theme. 
you know, the, the colours of the board. So with that, let's take a look at the Gigabyte Z490 Gaming X and then jump into the testing. The Z490 Gaming X looks to be a decent offering at $170 US. You get three PCIe 3.0 M.2 slots and an 11-phase V-Core VRM using Vachet SIC 651A 50 amp power stages. So quite a strong VRM for a board at this price and certainly much better than the ASRock offerings. Before we get into the graphs, let's talk a bit about the test conditions. For this testing and any future LGA 1200 VRM thermal testing, I've built a dedicated system with the help of Corsair, who sent over their Obsidian Series 500D mid-tower case, RM850X power supply, IQ H150i RGB Pro XT all-in-one liquid cooler, and 32GB of their Vengeance RGB Pro DDR4-3200 memory. The Obsidian 500D has been configured with a single rear 120mm exhaust fan and two top-mounted 140mm exhaust fans. Then in the front of the case is the H150i 360mm radiator with three 120mm intake fans. This is a pretty standard configuration, airflow is going to be good, and in a 21 degree room I'd say this is an optimal setup. Then for recording temperatures, I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples, and I'll be reporting the peak rear PCB temperature. Finally, I'm not reporting delta T over ambient. Instead, I maintain a room temperature of 21 degrees, as this, in my opinion, is by far the most accurate way to conduct this testing. And monitoring ambient room temperatures is a thermocouple position next to the test system. First up, here's a look at the out-of-the-box performance, and depending on the board and brand, different power configurations are used, so this is by no means an apples-to-apples -apples test. And here, for example, we see the ASUS Tough Gaming Z490 Plus peaking at just 49 degrees, but in this instance, the board is limiting the CPU to a package power of just 125 watts, whereas a board such as the MSI Z490 Tomahawk is running at around 190 watts. So with this data as sort of a reference point, let's move on to the stock testing with the power limits removed. With the power limits removed, the Core i9-10900K should maintain an all-core clock frequency of 4.9 GHz. However, there are a few things that we need to note here. Firstly, the budget ASRock Z490 Pro 4 and Phantom Gaming 4 boards that we looked at about a week ago failed this test, crashing just seconds after beginning the stress test. The VRM on those boards is very weak, but even so it was shocking to see both fail what is still technically a stock 10900K test. The base TDP spec isn't the only official Intel spec. Anyway, it appears as though the 8 phase VRM on the ASRock Z490 Extreme 4 and Steel Legend are artificially power limiting the boards before current or thermal load becomes a serious issue as both boards throttled the 10900K about 10 minutes into our stress test, and that saw them finishing the hour-long test with an average core clock frequency of just 4.6 GHz. So very disappointing stuff from ASRock. They should be able to correct this with an updated BIOS, but so far no such update has been released. Under the same test conditions, the MSI Z490 Tomahawk actually delivered the best results, which is a little bit surprising, beating the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi by a few degrees. That said, I should note that this is somewhat of a meaningless margin, and really all it does mean is that both boards passed with ease. And the same is also true for the Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Elite and Vision G. The ASUS Tough Gaming Z490 Plus also does well, peaking at just 63 degrees, so another very cool result. We do see a bit of a jump up in temperature for the Gigabyte Z490 Gaming X, but even so at just 68 degrees, that is an excellent result. We also see that the ASRock Z490 Extreme 4 and Steel Legend crept into the 70s, but they sort of failed this test anyway when they downclocked the 10900K. Okay, so here's our most stressful stress test. For this one, the Core i9-10900K has been overclocked to 5.1 GHz using 1.35 volts. Again, the ASRock Z490 Extreme 4 and Steel Legend couldn't stick the overclock, and within 5 minutes began to downclock the 10900K, and by the 20 minute mark were mostly holding at the 3.7 GHz base clock. So that is another fail for ASRock. The outright best result here comes from the Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Elite, peaking at just 72 degrees, an impressive result given the load. The MSI Z490 Tomahawk was equally impressive at 74 degrees, and so was the Z490 Vision G. Actually, it's interesting to see the Vision G running 3 degrees hotter than the Aorus Elite, despite featuring what we feel should be better heatsinks. I guess that plastic cover just wasn't helping. It was also interesting to see the MSI Z490 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi running 4 degrees hotter than the Tomahawk. Certainly not a big difference, but the Gaming Edge is meant to be the more premium model. The ASUS Tough Gaming Z490 Plus was also less impressive than what we'd hoped to see. Still, 81 degrees for the peak temp in this test is a good result, despite running 7 degrees hotter than the Tomahawk. 
In fact, it only matched the Gigabyte Z490 Gaming X, which comes in around $30 cheaper. Thankfully, the ASRock Z490 Steel Legend and Extreme 4 were able to hold the 5GHz 10600K overclock. Still, I can't recommend either of these boards until ASRock adjusts the VRM power limits, but at least they passed this test. As for the rest of the boards, the ASUS Tough Gaming Z490 Plus and Gigabyte Z490 Gaming X, they are again the hotter boards in this pack, but with peak temperatures below 60 degrees, there's really nothing to worry about. And that being the case, the VRM quality really shouldn't be the deciding factor in this buying decision. This is also true when comparing the Aorus Elite, the Tomahawk, Vision G and Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, as all four boards delivered excellent results. Okay, so we've now looked at every ATX Z490 motherboard priced at or below $200 US, and there are definitely some boards that you will want to avoid, and sadly almost all of them come from ASRock. The Z490 Phantom Gaming 4 and Pro 4, they're just terrible products. Probably don't need to say too much more on that one, we have covered them previously, so I won't harp on about how bad I think they are. And then we have the ASRock Z490 Steel Legend and Extreme 4. And I have to say, they're pretty underwhelming, both on paper and in our testing. I just don't get what they offer to sway you away from purchasing the better equipped and higher quality alternatives, such as the Gigabyte Z490 Gaming X or MSI Z490 Tomahawk. In practice, we found that both are even less appealing, failing some of our testing by throttling the CPU. Again, it's possible ASRock can address the throttling issues, but by doing so, both boards will run much hotter than the Gaming X. So at that point, you probably wouldn't want to purchase either of them anyway. Basically, if you want a board with more features than say the MSI Z490A Pro or ASUS Prime Z490A, then the Gigabyte Z490 Gaming X is a pretty nice option. But for just $20 more, the MSI Z490 Tomahawk and Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Elite, and they're very tempting, and really, if you can invest the extra money, then I suggest you do. I have to say, I wasn't particularly impressed with the ASUS Tough Gaming Z490 Plus. It's not a bad board, but it lacks a few of the features you'll find on the other $200 US models, and the VRM performance wasn't quite on par. But as I said, it is good enough overall, and by this point, VRM performance really isn't a major consideration. As I said, all the boards, minus those few ASRock models, they performed very well. So the standout models here for me include the MSI Z490 Tomahawk, the Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Elite, and the Gigabyte Z490 Vision G. Now, I'm not sure how much more Z490 VRM thermal testing I'll do beyond this point, and that is for two reasons. Firstly, we have a heap of AMD B550 boards flowing in, and I've been able to pre-order a heap of boards thanks to our Patreon members, so that's really cool. But yeah, just a lot of B550 testing to come up on the channel shortly. And by the sounds of it, a lot of you are much more interested in seeing that testing, so I guess it makes sense to shift focus there. But I think more importantly, when it comes to this Z490 Verum thermal testing, I think we've managed to weed out all the bad boards, so it's pretty much job done at this point. And for example, if you were to go the next step over the $200 boards that we showed in this video, so the next price tier up, that would land you boards such as the ASUS ROG Strix Z490H, the ASRock Phantom Gaming Z490PG Velocitor, uh, the MSI, these names, MPG Z490 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi, and then the Gigabyte Aorus Pro AX, sort of a more simple name there. But yeah, we'll land you those boards, and all of those boards are an upgrade from the models just tested in terms of VRM quality, and as I noted quite a few times, we're already at a point where you can easily overclock the Core i9 10900K beyond five gigahertz, so unless you're an extreme overclocker, a buildzoid type, it really won't matter to the end user experience how those boards compare in terms of VRM thermals. And I think, we're pretty much at the end of this video. I don't think there's too much more to cover on this one. We've looked at all the data, we've discussed it, we've made our picks and done all that stuff. So if there's anything else you guys would like to add, you can do so in the comment section below. If there's any Z490 motherboards that you really would like to see the results for because it's a bit of an unknown, then I suppose we can do that. But as I said, I think we pretty much know what to expect from all the higher end boards. Other than that, you know, a lot of B550 testing, as I said, coming up on the channel. A lot of that is thanks to our Patreon members, as was this content. So if you'd like to jump over to our Patreon account and check it out, the link is in the video description. There's some pretty cool perks there. Exclusive Discord server, monthly live stream, which will be coming up on the channel. Well, not on this channel, but our Hub Extras channel for our Patreon members. I think that's next week. Q&A as well. There's some behind the scenes videos. We, we add them now and then. Anyway, if you're interested, link is there in the video description. But I think above all else, Thank you very much for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.